Okay, next. Eight. Okay, now it's going to get fun. Looks like we've got a calculated field here. Let's go to access. Close that out. Create. SQL view. There we go. Okay, write a SQL statement that shows average salary of the employees at each location. Display. Okay, so let's start with what we want to show. I don't know why location ID is what they want. Okay, no problem. Location city. And then a new field called average salary. Okay, this doesn't exist. What we're going to do is create what's called a calculated field. These are pretty straightforward. There's just a few rules we have to follow. So here's how we do it. We're going to uh, use an operator, AVG, or sorry, not an operator, a function. This is a built-in function in the SQL language that we can use. And just like an Excel function, if you're familiar with those, we pass in a value that we want to be averaged. So which field are we going to get average salary from? Well, no, don't be confused. Here in position, we have this min salary and max salary. These are hypothetical salaries for that position role. That's not what we want. Actual salary is going to be stored with the employee, him or herself, and it's going to be right here. So what we want is the field salary, and we need to give it a name. So what we do is we say average salary as that keyword, and then we just type in the name as we want it to appear, average salary. Okay. Uh, from, where is this going to come from? Well, location ID and city have got to come from the location IDs. Uh, sorry, from the location table. So from location, but salary has to come from the employee table. Okay, so far so good. Uh, where, let's set up our join. So hopefully you can pause this and see if you can set the join up on your own. See if you can remember how to do that. Okay, it's going to be location dot location ID equals employee dot location ID. So again, primary key equals foreign key. And uh, let's see, we want the average salary of employees in each location. So we're going to use a new term here called group by. So group by is a way of saying, all right, we've got a function. If we're using group by, we're only ever going to use this if there's a function being used on one of our fields in the select statement. So if there's no function up here, we're typically not going to use a group by statement, at least in the scenarios we're using. Um, however, what we need to do with the purpose of this statement is to say, okay, this field is being averaged. Which field do we want to show the averages for? So in particular, location city, we want to take all entries for each location city and group them together and then produce an average salary for that group. So there is a rule here. Any field that appears in the select statement that doesn't have a function uh, wrapped around it or being used has to appear down here in the group by list. So that means I need location ID and location city. Do I really need both of those? I don't know why the person, whoever wrote this, is asking for location ID. We're going to assume that they're not an idiot and they have some reason for needing it. So we're just going to go ahead and include it, even though um, we can't think of a good reason. So anyway, it's going to say take every repeated version or combination of location ID and location city group them into one row or one entry, and then average the salary for that entry. And lastly, does it want an order by? No, it doesn't. Okay. So that should do it. View. Okay. Specified field location ID could refer to one to more than one table listed in the from clause. Remember, we had this problem before, but hey, we, we used right here the table name to refer to which one we we're talking about. Well, we are also using location ID here and here. So it says right here, we don't know which table you want us to get location ID from because it would, could potentially come from either one. In truth, it doesn't matter. But we, in this case, it doesn't matter. But SQL doesn't know that. So we just have to come up here and pick one. And honestly, it doesn't even matter. So I'm just going to say location.location ID. But it's also going to want to know that down here. Location.location ID. All right, view. Here we go. One entry, and it's taken every actual employee that works in Atlanta and average all their salaries together. Every employee in Boston averages them together. So functions are very useful. Um, it just, the only the, the thing that people get tripped up on or forget about is how do I use this group by statement here? So again, the rule is any field in your select statement that doesn't have a, a calculation or a function attached to it or wrapped around it, you have to include everything left 
down here in your group by statement. So the more I include here, the more I ask for, the more detailed or the more it's going to drill down and and average the salary across a wider range of criteria. So we'll have more and more entries. For example, what I could do, and by the way, this is the answer for eight. You can save this one if you want to, but I'm going to show you another hypothetical situation here. I could say, um, I also want position title because I could have multiple salespeople at the same location. So let's break out average salary by location and position, which means I would then need to come to here and add position table, which means I also need to add another an and here. Whoops. Obsessive compulsive straightening. All right. Um, position dot position ID equals employee dot position ID. And then I would also have to include position title here in my list. So check it out now. Now it's saying, okay, uh, Atlanta, I have three different positions. Here's the average salary across those positions in Atlanta. Same thing in Boston, Chicago, I've only got two positions, average for those. So the more criteria I add to the field here, the more it's going to break that average salary down into smaller and smaller or more uh, granular measures. Okay, I'm going to uh, undo what I just did and save that one.